here's a little bit of homework help for unit seven, lesson three, powers of powers of 10. Uh, keep in mind that when we're talking about powers of powers, when we mention this thing about a power, we are talking about anything that is raised to an exponent. So when we see this one, this is a power of 10, and that power of 10 is 10, 10 to the seventh power. So this one is the power that we're talking about it. And when we put that power inside of parentheses and raise it to another power, then what we're talking about with that is we're taking that power outside and taking it of the power inside. So that power of a power means that we're going to basically be multiplying power times power. So that would be exponent times exponent. All right. And the way that we can think about this as well is we can think about this as saying the outside number. So this outside power right here, 2, can represent two groups of the inner power, 10 to the seventh power. And so we can think about that as a justification. We could, in the, the previous lessons, what we did is we just did 10 to the seventh plus seventh. But what we know about multiplication is that it is, um, multiplication is just repeated addition. And so the repeated addition is seven plus seven. So in this case, we could simply say 10 to the seventh power times second power, giving us 10 to the 14th power. Don't forget to write your little carrot in there or else it's not going to recognize what's going on there. You're going to continue to do this same work for this next problem. Recognize that this is a power of a power. The next one is a power of a power. Again, power of a power. And again, power of a power, but this time, and actually just kidding, another power of a power. And I think that was all that I had for you. So, oh, just kidding. There's this other one here called an amoeba. An amoeba is actually, it's a um, basically a microscopic organism. And what that amoeba is doing, if you have, let's have a, a really kind of creepy looking amoeba. It's got little cilia all over it, which are like hair. And that amoeba divides to form two amoeba after one hour. So after one hour, we see that that amoeba is now two amoeba. Okay. So one hour later, again, each of those two amoebas divided into the form of two more. So we see this constant pattern where at zero hours, we saw just one amoeba. At one hour, that number doubled. The next hour, those two right above it doubled. And then each hour after that, it divides by two more. So after three hours, the four would double and we would have eight amoeba. So when we talk about this, how many amoeba are there after one hour? Well, you're welcome. I just did a bunch of your work. One hour here. You have to now interpret what this means. After two hours, right here. I didn't do for six hours, so you're going to have to be thinking about that and be thinking, if you get to a number that's really big, we need to put these into exponential form. You look at part C, and it says write an expression for the number of amoeba after six hours, but this time we want it in exponential form. So as you continue, if you continue this table here, that's totally fine. You can keep doing that. But you have to think about the piece about what's happening. We have to think about that rate that's happening is that that amoeba, that one amoeba is doubling over and over and over and over again every single hour. And so how would we represent that for part C? Um, I'll give you that hint that the base is two, but you're going to have to figure out what that value will be for N if N represents any number of hours that that amoeba is alive. Part D, you're going to look at the same thing, but after 24 hours, remember that right here, you're going to give us your base. Whoops, sorry. You're going to give us your base, which we knew was two. So I might as well just write that there. So the base of two raised to what power? Okay. And then give me an, ex an example for this or an explanation. It says why might the exponential form or the exponential notation be preferable to answer these questions. So specifically this one, I want you to think about part D. That's kind of the big idea. When you get to a number like this, I'm going to tell you it's a really big number. 
after 24 hours, how many amoeba are there? That's this number, which is going to be a really big number. Why would it be better to write it in exponential form instead of just in standard notation? Okay. Uh, the next question is a review question that comes to us from the previous unit talking about writing a system of equations. Um, we're talking about Elena and her cousin Katie, and we're talking about their ages. So we have to recognize a couple of things here. First off, we have the variables. Elena is currently E years old, so E is going to represent Elena, and Katie is currently K years old, so E is the number of years Elena's been alive, K is the number of years Katie's been alive. And we need to recognize which one represents the stories. So we notice right here, Elena noticed that nine years ago, nine years ago, seems like that, her cousin Katie was twice as old as Elena was. Interesting. Is that right? I don't know. I want you to play with it. Figure out which one is which. Make sure that it works out. And then notice this other one that says, in four years, I'll be as old as Katie is now. So what I'm going to suggest to you this. Try and figure out what the equations will look like as if you're finding one for Katie. And then one that you're finding for Elena. Obviously, I didn't use the lower K or the lower E because it's not in one of these ones. But I want you to be thinking specifically about those lines. How can I find an equation that represents Katie's age as well as an equation that represents Elena's age? And that's it for your homework. Reach out to me if you need more help with it. Have a great day.